good morning good afternoon good evening good whatever time zone you guys are currently in and welcome back to another come with me to the gym vlog so today we are going to use my usual c4 strawberry watermelon pre-workout I'm gonna be using this for the next couple of days couple of weeks I should say because this shit's brand new but I do want to try something new because this is sweet like it is sweet like kool-aid it is so sweet so if you guys know what pre-workout that actually is really good and works and isn't so sweet drop it in the comment box below let me know I definitely want to try something different she better not hit me she okay oh my god every time people park next to me I get anxiety I start watching them and I'm like uh is she gonna hit me uh I see you um are you gonna slash my car can she drive because some people y'all some people do not know how to park and I know you guys see that I know you guys see in cars where you're just like what were you thinking who gave you your license all right so we're gonna take the scoop all right, so I didn't film a glute activation or a warm up, but it's pretty much the same thing I do all the time. So you guys can find that video in the description box below. So for my first exercise, I did hip thrust with a resistance band and a 50 pound dumbbell. And the hip thrust I actually did was one full range of motion and two quarter hip thrusts as one rep. And I did those eight times for three sets. And guys, my glutes were on fire. So if you don't know what a quarter hip thrust is, Basically what it is, is when your butt goes to the halfway point and then you thrust back up like I'm doing here. It's not going all the way down to the ground like this one. It actually goes halfway and then it comes back up. So for hip thrusts, you want to make sure that you push through your heel of your foot and your chin is always down, shoulder blades against the bench. And if you don't feel your glutes really working in a hip thrust, the bench might be too high or your feet might be too forward. You might want to bring them back in and that's definitely going to help you. And of course, someone wants to come talk to me while I'm doing my set. Super annoying. Thank God I was at the end of it. So for my next exercise, I actually did sumo squats. This actually targets your glutes and your inner thighs more than a regular squat. So to have a sumo squat position, you guys want to have your feet outside of your shoulders. And as you can see, you want to also angle your feet outwards. So your toes are pointing outside of your shoulders as well. You don't want to have it pointing forward. And as you go down, you're going to slightly lean your back, but not too much forward. And you want to make sure that your knees either stay aligned with your toes, but never passes your toes because you don't want to shift your weight forward. You always want to shift your weight backwards. And here you want to make sure that you go all the way down to really get that full range of motion as much as you possibly can. And then you want to squeeze your glutes at the top. Super important when you do come up from these squats, you guys, you want to make sure that you're pushing through the heel of your foot and you're not pushing through your toes or your hips or anything. You really want to use your glutes in this exercise. So next what I did actually, I don't know what to really call these. I guess you can call them like elevated hip thrusts, but these were really, really good. So I put a resistance band on. I didn't do this with any weights, so I just wanted to do higher reps and sets. I actually did 15 reps of these and I did this three sets. And so what you want to do is you want to place your feet shoulder width apart and just thrust your hips up to the ceiling and then squeeze it at the top. Once I finished with the 15 reps of these, I automatically went straight into a super set with hip abductions. And guys, that, this is a burner, okay? So I actually did 15 hip abductions right after, as you guys can see. You want to make sure for the hip abduction, super important, that you're pushing against the resistance as much as possible and you're controlling it as you bring it back in. You don't know what, you do not want the resistance to force your legs back in. You want to be always in control of your legs movement, okay? So after I did 15 of this, I repeated the same process for three sets. Okay, first of all, I didn't realize that someone was there trying to get my attention. I don't know, for some reason today, everyone was trying to talk to me, but I found out later on that she just wanted to use something and she thought I was using it, so that was nice of her to wait for me. But anywho, so I'm doing right now donkey kickbacks, but I'm using a 15 pound dumbbell in between my legs to really add on resistance and like weight to make it more harder for myself. And this is very challenging at first because you have to get used to the feeling of a dumbbell, especially if the dumbbells like has rigid um, handles like this one does between your legs. And I was wearing mesh leggings in the back, so I definitely felt it. But after a while, you get used to it. If anything, you could put like a small little towel around the dumbbell so it's less of that rigid feeling on in between your knees. You also want to make sure that you have your back always straight, keep your core engaged, and you don't want to over kick to the point where you arch your back at the top, okay? Because that's going to cause lower back problems. Also, when you guys bring your foot up to the top, 
you want to just do it to the point where you feel your lower glutes contract in and you want to also squeeze your glutes when you bring it to the top to really get the muscles to further contract and get the benefits of this exercise because guys these donkey kicks definitely give you the pump that you want so for the last exercise i actually did fire hydrants with the same concept of putting the dumbbell between my knees so this actually really makes it more difficult than using just resistant bands. If you want, you guys can definitely add resistant bands onto this as well. I'm probably gonna do that next time. And it's the same concept in a sense of keeping your core engaged, your back is straight, and you don't wanna over kick. You always wanna control your leg as you kick it out to the side and as you bring that leg back in. Don't let that weight carry your leg, let your leg carry the weight, if that makes any sense, okay? And I did 12 reps for three sets. Also, what you guys want to keep in mind when you're working glutes or doing a glute day that you target each part of your glute muscles. So here this is working the side glutes. You can do this with resistant bands if you don't want to do dumbbells or even on the cable machine. Just really make sure that you are incorporating lateral glute exercises on your glute day. So that was the end of all my exercises. I also did my stretches, but I didn't put it on camera. So if you guys want, that's going to be in the description box below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll catch you guys next time.